Speaking of Zach Levine, speaking of Bradley Beal, there may come a situation where the Celtics might have potentially an opportunity for either one of those guys. You only got one spot. You can only take one of them. Who you got, Kwani? Ooh. Wow. Okay. Now I'm going to sound like a hypocrite for still being shocked that Zach Levine was even being considered. But I would go with him because I'm still not sure exactly how that dynamic of Bradley Beal. Well, it's it, this is a tricky scenario because if we – the Celtics were to get Bradley Beal, that would mean that Jalen Brown probably wouldn't be on, in the conversation anymore. So now I'm backtracking. <laughs> Look at you. Look uh, at like Dion, uh, excuse me, Coach Sanders in his right. prime, in that back pedal. <laughs> Call me Coach. Hey, yes, coach, Coach Sanders. Right. <laughs> when it comes down to it, I think you always look for, you want a Bradley Beal on your team. But – I think with me, at least, I overthink it. Like, how are they going to work out? How's the chemistry going to be on this team? I think either way, if you get Bradley Beal in that Celtics locker room, you can't go wrong. But if you want to be the Jalen Brown type. Get off the fence. Pick one. Get off the fence. I'm I'm giving you both options and explaining why they both work. I don't want both options. I want Kwani's options. Pick one. (laughs) I'm taking Bradley Beal. Damn, okay. All right. Yeah. Um, you couldn't let me just walk around the answer? No, no, no. This no, no. This, this is this is not your, your neighbor your neighbor's oh my God. The neighborhood park. No, you gotta you gotta pick a lane and run in that lane, Kwani. I'm gonna see, look if, if those two were both available, yeah. I would probably go with Zach Levine. And I'm gonna okay. tell you why. Um Zach is a little bit younger. Uh, mm-hmm. Zach is a little bit bigger in terms of height. I think Zach has a little bit more versatility. And the difference in terms of score really isn't that dramatically different. And the, as I pointed out earlier, Zach Levine is, be, is becoming a much more efficient score. And so mm-hmm. that, to me, lends itself to someone who can play a multiple of of roles and still be impactful in those roles because of that level of efficiency. Uh, and again, my, the biggest knock I've had against Zach and most people do is his defense. And I thought when he was with the Olympic team, I thought was some of the best defense I've seen Zach Levine play as a pro. And that gives me hope and confidence that if you put him in a situation where he's surrounded by top shelf, at least better talent than what we've seen him play with in Chicago, he can rise to the occasion, become an impact player and put the Celtics in position to really compete at the highest of levels. If, and that's a big if, if he becomes available. Uh, I don't, I think, like I said, if, if Chicago's smart, and it's debatable about that question, <laughs> you don't let a guy that good go. Uh, you don't let a guy that young, that talented, that impactful go, particularly when you know the market for him isn't going to be that, he's going to get the max contract wherever he goes. And so that you can't get into one of those back and forth trying to squeeze and save a buck or two, he's going to get the most available to him no matter where he goes. And so if you're Chicago, money should not be the issue. The issue for you has to be, do we feel that this is a player that when we look at our team going forward and we look at how we're going to compete at the highest levels, does he fit into what that image looks like? And I would say yes, uh, because, again, all the things I've stated already, but Chicago – I don't know how they're going to, I don't know. I just don't know how they're going to going to treat him. And to a lesser extent, we don't know whether Zach Levine is going to be down with the NBA power play movement where he calls his own shots. You know, we've seen it with, we've seen it with uh, Harden. You know, we, we've seen it with lots of players recently where they've made the decision that they are going to put their thumb on a scale on the trade market scale to get yeah. to a certain destination. Uh, yeah. and, and so we don't know if he's going to be another player along that line of, of thinking. But I, I, my gut tells me he won't, that he will, you know, he'll just give Chicago every chance to keep him in the fold long term. And if they hint, if they if they hint that they may not want to do that, then he'll get a wandering eye. Um, right. Because he, to me, Zach Levine, he, he's like that. He's like that, that soon to be soon, soon to be single supermodel. You may not like me, but I know because of who I am, somebody will. So if I want to boo you up and you like, I don't know, I don't know, that's okay. 
because I'm going to get booed up somewhere else. So Zach is going to be all right, no matter what he does, because he's that good a player. His track record has been a steady incremental increase in terms of his ability to impact games. And again, he, he's, he's in that, he's in that position that all NBA players want to be in where, you know, you're going to get the most allotted for you. It's just a matter of who's cutting that check.